cancer historically was a disease of aging. Disease rates are skyrocketing among younger populations. We're becoming plastic. Dr. Yvonne Burkhardt is a leading toxicologist and a passionate scientist dedicated to educating the public about harmful chemicals in our everyday lives. These chemicals, often found in common household items, can contribute to serious chronic illnesses, including cancer. I'm a toxicologist, so I study the basic science of poisons. How do chemicals interact with the cells in our bodies and how do they cause harm? How do our cells defend themselves against these toxins? On our channel, we've highlighted the top five products Dr. Burkhardt frequently warns against, items she advises avoiding to reduce the risk of diseases like cancer and infertility. Her insights are also personal. She overcame infertility herself by eliminating products containing toxic chemicals. I started to uncover the linkages between these low-dose environmental chemicals and products that we're using all the time and how they impacted my health. And when I started to remove them and replace them with safer options, my health recovered and I was actually able to conceive my own children without assistance. What's shocking is that many of these harmful items are things we use daily without a second thought. The first product on her list, nonstick cookware. So what's the worst type of cookware? Anything with a nonstick coating. Guaranteed, if you walk into any store right now, nine out of 10 pans are coated with nonstick chemicals. Even all the air fryers that everyone's using, the liners that go into the air fryers, rice cookers, pots, pans, parchment paper, these nonstick chemicals are literally everywhere. So what's the issue? Nonstick coatings on cookware are primarily composed of man-made chemicals known as per and polyfluoroalkyl substances or PFAS for short. You might know them as Teflon, which are just one type of chemical within this group. These chemicals are so widespread in consumer products and are extremely persistent in the environment. As such, we're exposed continuously and there are PFAS in all of our bodies. And it is believed that because it is so chemically stable that it wouldn't come off the pan into your food. But that's not true. There's evidence showing that there is transfer from the cookware in normal cooking conditions into food. Not only that, when you heat that pan high enough, it will vaporize and get into the air. And if you inhale it, you run the risk of experiencing what's known as Teflon flu. If you've ever had a nonstick piece of cookware, it scratches very easily. And some of these scratches are microscopic and invisible to the, to the naked eye. Studies have found that a surface scratch can release 9,000 particles from that nonstick coating into your food. And if it's a crack, that number jumps up to 2.3 billion particles that are transferred into your food. What happens to our bodies after prolonged exposure to these particles? Well, PFAS are linked with several types of cancers, kidney and testicular cancer, thyroid disorders. Thyroid problems are so common these days, but they're not normal. Then we have increased risk of miscarriage, preterm labor, preterm birth, preeclampsia, which is high blood pressure during pregnancy that could be deadly. You also have increased obesity that's linked with PFAS chemicals. And PFAS also contribute to an increase in endometriosis and PCOS. People who have endometriosis and PCOS, they have found to have higher levels of PFAS in their bodies. And PFAS are found in everybody. No one's exempt. Everyone has PFAS in our bodies. But what's a better option than the conventional nonstick plastic cookware? Cast iron, stainless steel, glass cookware, ceramic cookware. The next category of products to minimize using is beauty products, particularly those containing harmful ingredients like fragrances, parabens, and benzene. Dr. Yvonne is a powerful living example herself. She overcame infertility after eliminating beauty products with toxic chemicals from her routine. This study is literally groundbreaking. For the first time, we have been able to see exactly what certain ingredients are doing in the humans, in the human model. So women without any history of breast cancer were asked to remove these ingredients from their products for 28 days. So that's very short. They took cells from the breast tissue. They were all normal. They measured the amount of breast cancer gene expression. So after 28 days of removing these ingredients, they took another sample and they saw that the breast cancer gene expression dropped. And the only thing that they were asked to change about their lifestyle was to remove these ingredients from their beauty and personal care products. What does this mean? This means that once you stop using products that contain parabens, phthalates, and other xenoestrogens, that breast cancer genes turn off, meaning you reduce the risk of developing breast cancer. One of the risk factors for developing breast cancer is the activation of breast cancer genes. There's a long held belief within the cosmetic industry that these parabens are innocuous, that the amount absorbed is so low that it doesn't matter. But clearly the study shows otherwise. 
They're basically used to extend the shelf life. They're preservatives. They don't need to be used. There are plenty of other safer alternative preservatives out there. And it's basically because they're extremely effective and cheap. Dr. Yvonne also highlights the significant potential risks associated with fragrances and products. Some of the hidden toxins and the issues that we have with fragrance are number one, you mentioned how pervasive they are. They are literally in everything. Some of the hidden toxins are endocrine disrupting phthalates. So the International Fragrance Association or IFRA is the industry self-governing body for the fragrance industry. They have a list of what they call the transparency list. There are nearly 4,000 at this point. So it can be the word fragrance can be any combination of nearly 4,000 chemicals. They include, those are endocrine disruptors. There are carcinogens in there. Styrene, for example, that's a known human carcinogen. So avoid the word fragrance unless it says that the fragrance comes from essential oils. So here she shares her very own experience. Once I started to clean out my makeup drawer, I really saw a shift because of what I was doing on a day-to-day -day basis, I was using several cosmetic products. I was absolutely obsessed with perfumes and fragrances. Once I removed those, one by one, slowly disentangling myself, I started to see real change. And I noticed more energy return. I was feeling more fit. I had more mental clarity, more focus. I didn't have as many headaches and migraines anymore. And I just started to feel like more vitality, pregnant within nine months. While it may be impossible to get rid of all toxic materials, she emphasized that we should aim for low tox. Try to make those as low tox as you can. Low tox meaning not trying to be non-toxic, zero tox, because that doesn't exist. Low toxic just means choosing the better option as best as you can, as frequently as you can. The third products that you should try to avoid using is paper cups or takeout cups. Unfortunately, the paper cup is lined with a thin layer of polyethylene plastic. A lot of people would believe that the paper cups that you're getting are lined with wax, but that simply isn't true. More cups out there now are no longer lined with wax, but with plastic. And that plastic has been shown in studies to leach microplastic particles into your hot beverages. Within 15 minutes, that study found that 25,000 microplastic particles are leaching into your drink. Not to mention there's also heavy metals, lead and so on that are leaching from those plastic linings. That's not even mentioning the, the lid that goes on top. Bring your own mug or cup. I love getting coffee out. We should minimize plastic use whenever possible, as it can break down into microplastics and eventually into even smaller nanoparticles. Nanoplastics are smaller than microplastics, so microplastics can break down and become nanoplastics. And the issue with nanoparticles are that they can easily penetrate cell membranes. The effects are pretty wide reaching. They can penetrate skin. The same applies with any plastic containers, even if it says BPA free. Do not microwave plastic containers. Even after just a few seconds, you'll get release of billions of microplastic particles into your food. The fourth product type we should avoid is plastic water bottles and even be careful using tap water. Unfortunately, our water supply around the world is polluted. All different types of consumer products, pharmaceuticals, toxic chemicals, pesticides, heavy metals, whatnot, we need to filter it. The better water filter you can get, the better your health will be because we're mostly made of water, right? In that case, is bottled water safer? The answer is no. The following lists out what you should not do with bottled water. One of them is if you put that plastic water bottle in the sun, UV causes plastic to break down. So that's releasing microplastics. Just squeezing it, physical force is causing microplastic shearing and release. But not just that, just over time, the plastic is just leaching on its own. Temperature is another factor. So if you leave that in a hot car, microplastics. If you've ever had a bottle of water sitting in a hot car and you drink it and it tasted like plastic, that's because it is, it's plastic. It's becoming more plastic. The fifth is to do with clean air. Try to avoid burning at home, such as using candles, incense, or even vaping quality of our air is massively important for our health. If you are cooking, turn on the vent fan. Make sure it's venting outside. Open your windows. If you don't have a vent fan, take a fan and blow those fumes out an open window. And also don't burn your food because it's basically about the, the particulates that are coming out from smoke. We don't want to burn things unnecessarily. For example, burning candles, a lot of people burn their candles and they don't open their windows. There are five main reasons why I would not burn a conventional candle. Number one is that when you light those candles, they liberate carcinogens like benzene, toluene, and formaldehyde. But not only that, ultrafine particles. Ultrafine particles are some of the most hazardous substances. So ultrafine particles are tiny particles, less than 0.1 microns in diameter, 100 nanometers, invisible to the human eye. As soon as you inhale them, they'll go into your brain. They also have the ability to go as far down into the lung as 
one can go. <laughs> if an ultrafine particle can get that down, far down into your lungs, it's guaranteed into your bloodstream. It's getting all over your body. It's causing inflammation and oxidative stress, which are the basis of many chronic diseases. Number two is that they're also releasing volatile organic compounds. Number three, they contain undisclosed fragrance. And within fragrance, there can be endocrine disruptors, carcinogens, and allergens. So when you light these candles, you're getting all of these toxins into your air. Number four, some of the dyes that are used to color candles are carcinogenic. And nobody has any idea is if you burn them, what are the health effects of burning these carcinogenic dyes? And number five, candles are largely unregulated. So they're just trapping in a lot of these toxins that we're creating that don't need to be there. And then excess moisture can lead to mold formation. So if you're not getting adequate ventilation, sunlight and things like that into your rooms, your home, you could get mold taking off your shoes before you come in the house, tracking in so much actual physical gunk from outside, that's actually contributing to air pollution as well. Air quality indoors can be up to five times worse than air quality outside, which shocks a lot of people. 